Thank you so much, uh, lady and gentlemen, for joining the show. It is um, uh, with great pleasure that I welcome you, of course, as you are all aware. Today is Tuesday, March 16th, 2020, uh, 2021. My name is Eric Tato, and I'm your host. Um, today is going to be an editorial. We're going to analyze a couple of things and bring you this news from Canada and also talk about a few things that have been going on. As you are all aware, we'll be focusing on Cameroon today and we'll be talking about the uh, Cameroon's uh, four-year-old uh, armed conflict. And specifically, we'll be talking about the rebel groups and uh, those who are fighting for supremacy and the power instead of trying to liberate their people. Uh, for four years, whether or not you agree, uh, the people who are facing uh, tremendous pressure uh, in terms of uh, property destruction, disruption of economic life, disruption of social life, uh, those who are feeling the pinch the most, they are uh, English-speaking Cameroonians, those from the two English-speaking regions. And uh, these people have, of course, deliberately, consistently uh, sacrificed good life only to make sure that they see their homeland free. As you are all aware, this is National Telegraph, and uh, I'm your host today, and this is an editorial. We're going to go straight to the point. Uh, what baffles us at the National Telegraph is the fact that despite that, despite many being incarcerated and a lot more as refugees and internally displaced, those who sit in their comfort zones in the diaspora like in the United States and in other parts of the world have continuously attacked prisoners and others without season. And that is why as a defender of the truth, defender of the oppressed, Eric Tato will use this platform to state categorically issues that are related to our editorial and to our policies. I will start first things first by addressing the issues that are plaguing and the delayed negotiations between the Cameroon government and the rebels. As you are all aware, just recently, a journalist, uh, fame was, was uh, kidnapped, whatever we want to put it. But then, Nobody can deny the fact that these are still manipulations from the Cameroon government. You cannot pinpoint exactly if it's a separatist group that did it, but the fact that these journalists and other people within our communities are being kidnapped and videos are paraded and their face shown by Cameroonian uh, agent provocateurs, it will tell you one thing, that it is indeed a stage by the Cameroon government. Now, let me go straight to the point. Uh, why I would want to talk a little more about some issues related to the atrocities of the Cameroon government that everybody is already aware. The Human Rights Watch has been putting all those things out. And of course, at the same time, they've been cautioning separatists to also take time in, in the way they do things. But let me go to the crux of the matter. The issue with the war in Southern Cameroon, the issue with the sufferings of the masses of the two English-speaking regions of Cameroon, can be resolved by the separatists themselves understanding that each and every one of them has got a capacity at their own level. It is not only disgraceful, it is criminal that a leader of a revolution in jail gives an interview to Jean Afrique and then you have some bullocks, Nikon Poops who stay in the diaspora, lazy about and do nothing, come on social media, to attack somebody who gives an interview exposing the atrocities of Cameroon, the Cameroonian government, just because Chris Anu, Fu Johnson, who by the way is one of the worst lawyers on earth, just because they think that their useless criminal fraction should have been the one to give that interview, they go on a rampage attacking prisoners. I want to be categorically clear as a journalist, as an as an editorialist, I want to state it very clearly. What we know and what the world knows is that Southern Cameroon's AKA Ambazonia has only one legitimate leader, and that is Sisiku Ayoktabe Julius, Sako Ikome, Chris Anu, who have turned the Ambazonian Revolution into a gold mine and continuously steal from the people and think that what they must do to gain relevance is to attack a prisoner each time he gives a legit interview in his position as a legitimate leader of the Southern Cameroon uh, movement will give them any relevance. It wouldn't. Relevance can be given by you earning it. Have you asked yourselves why for four years 
Some of you have been making noise on social media, on WhatsApp, yet no international media organ, nobody recognizes Sako Ikomi and his criminal gang. That's the question I'm going to ask. Whether or not you like it, there is no way nobody in the international community would ever think that there is division among the Ambazonian factions. There is no division. I want to categorically state here clearly that so long as Ayok Tabe remains in jail, he's the only person that is looked upon now as a leader. Let me say this very clearly. There's one way Sako can change this game. Go down, take your flight, go down to Konengi and replace Ayok Tabe and that man can go live his life while you continue to be, you continue to be the leader. A leader in a revolution will not stay in the United States, doesn't go for protests, cannot make his own money to pay his own bills, he steals from the population, he announces drugs and steals $2 million because we are not seeing the money. And then when a leader gives a speech that is beneficial to the 8 million people, you sit on your dating side, you open your lash mouth and you attack patriots. No, there is no way this journalist is going to accept it. You might think that this is not journalism. No, it is. If you watch other media organs, you will see that they analyze things and call criminal cartels and so-called leaders by their names and they get even harsher than Eric Tato does. Sako Ikome, Chris Anu, Fu Jonso, what is your portfolio within the Ambassador Revolution? What is your worth in dollars? And you have some other criminal guy who calls himself Professor Anu. He's supposed to be a professor in quotes, but he knows nothing in terms of diplomacy, nothing in terms of public accountancy, and you say, okay, you have the right to attack Sisiku. Sisiku wouldn't reply, but you have watchdogs who will come after you and they will get a pound of your flesh. Let it be clear. There is only one leader in the revolution, and that is Sisiku Ayoktabe Julius, who owns all the soldiers on the ground, who owns all the activists, who owns everything, and that is why year in, year out, people go to talk to him in jail. When he makes a tweet, it becomes international news. John Africa can only go to Sisiku. BBC can only go to Sisiku or Yerima. National Day can only go to Sisiku. Apart from the much home uh, fake news media organs on social media like the Mimi Mephos and the small twats around who will call Sako whatever. Who else does that? Those are small cheap media organs that can easily be bought. That can be bought with $200 and they will do some crazy job for you and you comment. Let it be clear. My name is Eric Tato and I want to be systematic that I can stay quiet and watch you do stupidity on social media. But there's one thing I have said and I will still repeat. I will never take from criminals and jobless guys like Chris Anu who have changed their lives because of the revolution. What is their job? Where do they work? What is their worth in dollars? Let us ask you, how do you have leaders who stay in the diaspora? They have zero, zero dollars. They have zero infrastructure in their villages. All they do is to cause confusion on social media because they want the world to last as long as they can so that they can continuously steal from the people. What is Sako working as a leader? What is he doing? What is Chris Anu doing? What is Fujonso's job? What can Fujonso offer the revolution? How much is Fujonso actually contribute in this revolution? Apart from stealing from prisoners, stealing money from donations, and trying to build a house in Douala. When that house was discovered, Sisiku and Co. removed him from managing prison funds. And of course, Fujonso abandoned that property halfway and there is no way he can complete it. So he gets frustrated with a man who stops him from getting money. I want to say something. Sako Ikomi, all of you go and walk like Eric Tato. Go and walk like other Ambazonians. Stop stealing from people and stop coming on social media thinking you can gain relevance by attacking a leader. You will never be able to lace Sisiko's shoes. He remains the Ambazonian leader we support him. He has the highest forces on the ground. And so long as we live as people who have sacrificed, we will not tolerate armed robbers sitting as connoisseurs of crimes, crimin criminals attacking prisoners. It will not happen. Every title will not allow it. Today, tomorrow, it will never happen. I will tell you people to your faces, a revolution is fought by big people who have big mentality, to make sure the work and governance fund for their people, not steal from their people. Let us be clear. You must all know one thing. There is one leadership. And that is why Paul Bia spent millions go and went to, uh, to, to Nigeria to kidnap them and take them over. Listen to me and let me say all of this. Quote me anywhere. 
This is National Telegraph. And this is my editorial. As a journalist, I have the right to give my opinion. And I can give it in whatever manner, style, and form, in whatever length. I will still repeat it. For all of you, especially like the call, the Sarko faction, the Picts, as you are all aware, most of you are like school dropouts. I'm robbers and anti truth tellers. You don't want nobody who speaks the truth. And you think a revolution is on WhatsApp. It's not on WhatsApp. It can never be on WhatsApp. If Sarko thinks he's a leader of the Ambassador Revolution, he should not attack John Afrique for interviewing Sisi Kwayoktabe. He should cause John Afrique, John Afrique, to see the re to see reasons why they can interview him instead of Ayoktabe. Sarko should cause the Guardian Post, BBC, you must carry yourself. Respect is earned. Mm -hmm. Respect is earned. It can never be forced. So, every day, you people of the peak, you continuously expose yourself as low lives and splinter groups. Why are you so angry that a prisoner was interviewed? And by the way, looking at the content of Seseko's interview, only a madman and a jean provocateur, an agent of La Republic of Cameroon, can be so mad about such an interview. An interview that highlights the plight of a people, that talks of the resistance of a movement, and you stay on a crazy network. Let me say something. You know why nobody will ever bother about you people of the Sarko camp? Because ABC is watched only by a cycle. Who listens to ABC apart from the pics and those of you on WhatsApp groups? Have you ever asked yourselves, why is it that Sarko has never progressed above you calling him president on WhatsApp groups? Have you ever asked yourselves, why is it that Chris Anu remains as useless as he is and he only makes noise when it comes to within Amazonians? Who knows Chris Anu in Ghana, in Ethiopia? Who knows, who knows Chris Anu in the United States? Who knows them? Have you asked yourself why senators in the United States never met Sako? Have you asked yourself why diplomatic missions would never refer to Sako? Why the, uh, the uh, 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 Dep Department of uh, State Department in the United States never talks about those people? Have you asked yourselves? You ask yourself why the biggest, the strongest activist or all the big activists within Ambazonia have divorced Sako? Have you asked yourselves? And now he has a few mushrooms and crickets that are playing games for him. No, it's not going to happen. You cannot insult a prisoner and you go free. Ambazonia's biggest activist, who is just doing his own things and staying as much as calm as he can, will always come back when you touch those prisoners. If you want to be free from every tattoo, keep prisoners away. Steal your money. I'm not talking no more about the money you steal. Some of your followers have proven to be very dull, dollars, and they can steal. You can steal from them as much as you can. Sisipo has big Robagon. Sako has draft. Ayaba has stabilization form, uh, force. And let me come to the Ayaba Chris Anu issue that I never addressed. As you are all aware, Chris Anu is a conspiracy theorist. I have said it and I will still repeat that there is no way you will ever convince me to call Ayaba La Republic. From the time I was with Sako to when I divorced him, I could have differences with Cho Ayaba. But he's never La Republic. There are people within the Ayaba camp, like the Lucas Asu, that have categorically stated that he's La Republic to Cameroon. I don't have no problems with the other members of the AGC, none of them. But when I say something, it's authentic. There is no way Chris Anu can come and term the whole of the AGC or uh, 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 um, ADF La Republic. And some of you are clapping your sharing. Why are you doing that? Because you think that people should not contribute to the stabilization fund i have contributed to that fund with a code name yes i put 50 dollars there and i will still do it because it's it, it has some level of it, it's focus but i am not a fan of ayaba but i'm just a fan of good things and so chris anu you took money from the drive your brother free marshall no longer fights in the blm you asked your brother to go kill chiefs and you have not solved that issue. You have not apologized. All you do, you carry a large mouth. After stealing people's money and getting to wear good suits, you come on social media, you're attacking patriots who push a revolution ahead. Who does that? These are things that cannot be tolerated. And in the 21st century, armed robbers, criminals, 
and connoisseurs of crime should be shamed in the lights of Chris Anu. Look at the people you take to come and talk on behalf of the revolution. Food your soul cannot even afford two square, three square meals in the United States. A broke fellow, a, an abandoned lawyer who never won a case. Who is Food your soul? What is his portfolio? Read him up. Who is he? Who is Professor Ayi? Professor by name, what has he? What, how many books have, has Ayi, Ayi written? How much is Ayi worth in dollars? Chris Ayi, what is his worth in dollars? What is his, what is his background? What is his portfolio? And these are people you think diplomats to take seriously? I'm robbers who steal from the people. Somebody who uses $50,000 to go to Nigeria for a trip. And you stay on social media. You think you can use your large mouth and insult prisoners. And people will come and clap for you because you have planted chickens and maggots and small mushrooms everywhere to be attacking people on social media. People will pay flights for Francophone activists to leave Wagadugu to come to Norway so that they can be writing stuff on their behalf and trying to favor them. Let me tell you for one thing. And I will still repeat it. We have been in Washington, D.C. twice in less than one month for protest with a lot of people. Have you ever seen Sako or any of his surrogates? But I go there in my capacity as Eric Tata as an activist and I represent 8 million Ambazonians, represent Sikwayoka Julius, talk about him and tell the people that the president, there is no way you are going to change that. The one, the very, the very unfortunate thing about Sako is that the strongest activist, the most followed activist, the most connected activist is in support of Ayoktabe. I will not come on National Telegraph and talk about forces I have on the ground because, of course, we listen to advice from international partners. There is no day I'm going to talk about it again. But know that the biggest force on the ground is led by Sisiko Ayoktabe Julius. The Robagon project is the biggest project, most popular. That is why Sako Ikomi and his soldiers they went and copied Robagon and they said, Big firewood. What is big firewood? You cannot create anything on your own. All you know is how to steal arm robbers and cockroaches. It will not be tolerated. You cannot insult prisoners and you go free. They didn't do it in South Africa. It will not be done in Southern Cameroon and Bazonia. And if you, Sako, you think this is the only job you have, Look for a job because this war will be over and you will have nowhere to enter Ambazonia. If you, Chris, and you think in your head that you are going to be something in Ambazonia, no. A school dropout from Cash Bambili who barely passed from five of O levels cannot, cannot lead a communication department with zero knowledge on communication. You will not be anything. Put in your mind. We have ten, ten and thousands of journalists out there. As you are all aware, Eric Tato will say it repeatedly. I'm not interested in anything when it comes to position in Ambazonia. I'm a businessman, well established, and I only look for the like, like the, I only look for the good or goodness of the eight million people. So there is no way you can sit here and think that a revolution is about you coming out there and insulting prisoners. I hope that you have the right to negotiate for your people. But if the negotiation is not in our terms, we will also not accept it. So go ahead, negotiate, talk with all the ministers. Answer them. Take all the phone calls. Discuss whole meetings in the prisons. Tassan does that and they support it. Go ahead. Your people support you. You are supported by 8 million people. Forget the cockroaches and the worms on WhatsApp groups. They have no place. They have no place. All of the activists who is watching them. What is their, what is their, their fair, what is their first of influence? What is their oppression, oppression cycle? Let's put it that way. You stay out there and you make noise. Sarko should, Canvas for people to recognize him and do that politely as a human being. Don't do it as a pig and a god that you are. You stay back there, you send a school drop out like Chris Anu and a failed pastor and a, and, and, and a terrible lawyer who has zero wins to his name, like Fu John So, a lazy man who cannot even afford his slippers for five dollars on and put on his leg and come here and insult prisoners. Who gave you that effrontery? And you think people should continuously clap for you? Because you have planted some chickens on, 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 on social media to be attacking people. It's more than two months. I have not come live. And I think that people should run their face. But don't go to, don't go close to a or any prisoner, any refugee. Don't go close to them. If you go close to them, smoke will be out. That's a fact. This is National Telegraph and I have the right to do an editorial here in any manner that I please. Armed robbers cannot be tolerated. It will not happen. 
This is a war of independence. People are dying. The world is watching. And as a journalist, I have the right to educate people and to tell the rebels what is supposed to be the right thing. We will not have cockroaches everywhere. You think this is because you have to be in America and steal money from the people? Are you thinking about those who have died? The mommy happy? Do you think about mothers who have lost their children on the ground? You think about those prisoners, the refugees, in their millions? You think about those who are passing through the, 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 the terrible deserts in Mexico or Mexico? To come to the United States, you know how much people have fought the coalition of dialogue and negotiation, the way they have fought to make sure that anybody who comes from Southern Cameroon is, 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 is released from camps, detention centers. You know what children are going on in Cyprus, Thailand, Dubai, or the UAE? Do you know what's going on? But what do you do? You think you sit here in America and all you do, jobless people, I work in this country like 24 7, run about my business, sell t shirts in bars. Yes, I sell dimples t-shirts in bars. People will tell you, they'll testify. In bars, in banks, in offices. But I'm the CEO. So what? You're supposed to work to feed the people. Not stay on social media and begin to cause confusion because you think that this is your only job to steal from the people. So according to you, Amber Revolution is now something that you, you have to be stealing and attacking people in jail. I will ask you that, what did Sisiko say in the Jean Afrique interview? That can warrant any normal human being to come and attack him or talk negatively about it. It is something that all Ambassadors are supposed to share. A man says in an international news organ that is read by all presidents in the world that they stand for independence and you go and attack him. Are you not an armed robber? Are you not a criminal? Who are you working for? You attack a man for declaring the minds of 8 million people on a medium that you can never have an opportunity to talk. John Afrique would definitely be mad to come and interview Sako. The day John Afrique will interview Sako, that's when nobody will be reading it no more. So calm down. Earn your respect. You know, I build this following. And I, earn, I earn it because even those who say they are my enemies, when I come on, they still come to watch. Because they know every title will speak the truth. I will trigger them to either say what nonsense they want to say, but they will watch me. So earn your Sako. Earn it. You think I need to come and play music for 30 minutes and beg people on WhatsApp groups to share? To be able to get a thousand, no, I don't do that. When I come, it's two minutes, I'm done. Not too long. There is no day I'm going to play music more than a minute. Because in journalism, jingles are supposed to be short. Except when it's some kind of discussion that we have fun. So Sako, Chris Anu, Ayim, and the rest, back off. Back off. You will not touch the sequel and go free. You'll be eating. You will not, it will not happen. Prisoners will not be tempered with. And definitely not the leader of a revolution. There is one leader in Ambazonia, one, and that is Sisiku Ayoktabe Julius. No matter what you do, all the newspapers are reporting it because that is the legitimate leader. That is the legitimate leader. Pastors as fake as you guys create their own, create their own, their own, their own, their own lajes, their own finesse, make people like and trust you at the international level. There is nothing happens on WhatsApp. Let me explain to you what you don't know about WhatsApp. What's up is like your family. That's why it's, it's contact by contact. If I'm your what's up, you're my what's up, you see what I post on my status. If I'm not, I don't see. There are many people that don't see their number, they cannot see my, my status. So that is it. So don't think that because some 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 cheap guys in Germany or somewhere or in, in Europe, anywhere they'll be calling you, oh the president, it ends on what's up. It ends there. If there is one international media organ that reports ambassador that is read by all and sundry is national telegraph and when i say sisiku is president who are you to say otherwise you think those small chickens on whatsapp what is their following how far do they go abc you run on small facebook you have no website where people can go and read information and you want you want you want to come and talk when giants are talking you can only go and pay cheap cheap and small minded journalists around who just benefited from the revolution before this revolution started Eric Tato and Mark Breta were running our news organ for as long as five years before the revolution started. But all of them, I can name them, Prince Hansen, Mimi Mefa, and the rest, they germinated, they were created by this revolution. And that is why I, I told Mimi once that you have to know what to report. It's very important. I told her once that you cannot and you should not report without mentioning where they stole money. And she's afraid to do it. You know why? Because probably she's been bribed. I'm back and I'm ready to face any of you trying to sabotage prisoners. 
If you know you are for real, do the right thing. Armed robbers will not be tolerated. And journalists who support armed robbers will be crushed by every tattoo. Let's start it here. There is no way we will negotiate our sanity, integrity, and dignity with thieves and journalists who support thieves. That is how it's going to be. That is how it's going to be. And take it from me. You have the right to call somebody a thief if the person is a thief. And that is what we are seeing here today. Nobody will tolerate armed robbers. And I was just saying, apart from these chickens that got out from the revolution, who else calls Sarko president? I'm asking you, who else, apart from Mimi Mefo and Prince Hansen? And why is Prince Hansen calling Sarko president? Because he works with the Swiss as, uh, HD. That's why. For Mimi, I cannot know her reason. Maybe because they surely give her some stipends. It's, it's possible. The rest, nobody does it. Nobody's going to do it. Because these guys are armed robbers. I challenge all the journalists who are talking anything in this revolution. You know how to investigate. Come and get the files from Bank of America, from T-Bank. Go to the bank or call them as an investigator and ask that these files from every tattoo, are they real? Call people within the Sarko camp who have defected. Show them those files and ask them if Sarko didn't steal this money. All of you making noise as the pigs. Where's the $2 million you said you raised for draft? Today you wait when boys on the ground, they struggle to carry actions. You run and post it on Facebook and you say it's draft money. You know what's $2 million? You know what $2 million can do on the ground? But because you probably didn't raise that money or you had the little one that you raised and now you now you're looking for defense. Other people do things and you claim responsibility. The same way armed robbers will always behave. Let us be clear. And all of us must stand up to the truth and for justice. I was still say, yes, it's a shame that these chickens who, who got prominence because of the revolution, all of them, all of them, the people who even can talk about Sako or whatever, they got prominence because of the revolution. Yes, it's about time you told them the truth. Mimi for Prince Hansen. Those are the only two who call Sako. They will even mention Sako anything. And I'm going to tell them, those are kids. They should be in school behind me. Journalism is supposed to be you're supposed to be an objective. Have you asked yourself why they have never reported about the tick free my trip to Goya? Do your investigation like you do investigation in any other story and report it. But they can't because their mouths have been oiled. Gombo, they are eating gombo. So every title will not tolerate it. As you are all aware, I'm not afraid to make problems or be an enemy to anybody when I speak the truth. But one thing is clear. Those who love the truth are always more than those who hate the truth. The point is that those who hate the truth, those who hate the truth, they are always the first people to attack and make the loudest noise. So all of us who are going to stay here, fight this and keep it real and maintain the sanity, dignity of this movement. Armed robbers who don't work. I think from next month, Sako Ikomi, Chris Anu. And Bazunians should hold their leaders responsible to declare their incomes. Tell us where they work. Show us what they earned. They should be able to tell us. But Herbert earns zero dollar. Kometa is only struggling to survive. Chris Anu is no job. Sako file for unemployment. These are people you call leaders. Fu Johnson is even trying. He's earning $14 an hour somewhere in Bowie here, which is a good thing. That's the only person who works among, among them. I will say it. You think because I'm talking about food, so I will tell you that he doesn't work. I've said it before. I know where he works. He thinks I don't know. I know. But I'm not going to describe his job because it's not my business. Everybody who is an ambassador must rise up to the moment. I hope that I gave an interview. It was beneficial to the 8 million people. But it hurts a fraction of power mongers. Normal, normally, anybody who is an ambassador will be happy with that interview. But those who are not happy... There are people who think that, how do you tell me of John Afrique? Say, you must come and interview with us. You must put that, that uh, 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 interview down. You who? Chris Anu should know if he ever went to any journalism school. He will know that once an editor decides to put a story up, the only time an editor can put it down or can do a rejoinder, if, if some aspects, are, if the editor misrepresents an aspect of a person's interview, 
It's not about what you you what you think. Who cares about you? In the U.S. that you you are here, Chris, and you have not been able to call your own senator, your own in your own state of Texas, to tell them about what is going on. You are able to call by a journalist because you think that they have published Ayoktabe's story. Who is Chris Anu to Ayoktabe? Let's be honest. Chris Anu cannot even work for me because he does not have the qualification. He cannot edit my script. You think he's that last mouth to come and talk where he doesn't know the difference between Congo and Kumbu and doesn't know who killed Goliath? Is that a human being? You put your nest, dollars, arm robbers, stooges, and criminals. You say you call them leaders? Who, who, who is that leader who does not know? Who does not know the difference between Kumbu in, in Ambazonia or Cameroon's Northwest, as you want to call it, and Congo? He sees a video and swaps them. Is that a normal human being? A person who failed three times in one minute, in one live show, to answer who killed Goliath until he was a, a, a musician, really, the Paris was thinking about it. He doesn't know whether it's something, whether it's Mary or it's Elizabeth. He doesn't know. Let us be careful and prudent. A war of independence is supposed to be dedicated to those who have died, to refugees, to prisoners, to to IDPs, not to arm robbers in the diaspora. Not to arm robbers. Enough is enough. People have died for too long. People have been displaced, frustrated. And this is not time for some arm robbers to sit in, a, in the United States and think that they can attack prisoners. It will not happen. If you want to attack Sisi Kwayoktabi or any other person, from a prisoner to a refugee to an IDP, be ready to face me. And you are, you are all aware. I will still remind all of you that I still control the hugest following in this revolution. The fact that I stay quiet is not guaranteed. There is nobody who will touch those prisoners and go free. I remain the most followed Southern Cameroonian, and I will remain that way. None of you can change it, no matter the level of sabotage you try to carry out. You all come and watch this man, because he speaks the truth, and that is how it's going to be. A revolution is for conscious force patriots, not for armed robbers and jobless and heartless criminals who don't think about the plight of their people. A man gives an interview on, on Jean Afrique, and all you can do is to share it. How, how are you even going to share? Go and look at Sako's speeches, the one that he made compared to the one that Yerima made. Who is watching Sako? You post share with thousands of fake profiles, yet you don't get any, any, any consequence. If Sako was that so popular, was so powerful, was so much a leader, why is it that John African came to interview the left Sako is in the United States? Or despite the fact that he's announcing that he has collected two million. They went back to jail to interview a man who is just there on his own in his little bunker sitting on a bed with a small lamb on his face. And you, you that should ring a bell. When Sisiko Ayoktabe sneezes, Sako is coming and his criminal gang, they catch the coal. And that's how it's going to remain. This war will soon be over. And there's only one person who represents Ambazonia, like it or leave it, that's the Sikwa Yoktabe Julius. Let us be clear with it. I want to talk to the egg of C people. You are all aware that Chris Anu tried to attack Cho Ayaba because he saw that Cho Ayaba was launching the stabilization force. I will still repeat it, I'm not a fan of the egg of C, but I support the stabilization force. It is their right. So long as they do it in the interest of the people, it's their right. I have my issues with Ayaba Cho and some members of the Ugo because they think that they know more than everybody. But to be honest, they are doing their best. I'm going to rest it here and say that go to whatever length to sabotage Ugo or ADF for me and for now. I know very clearly that Ugo is not La Republic. But they have agents of La Republic within their means, which is normal in any revolution. I said it about Lucas Asu. Some of them believe it. Some of them see it. Some don't see it. That's fine. I'm not going to push it any further. But for Chris Arnu to continuously attack patriots, I will not tolerate it. As a revolutionary leader, as an activist, the only Ambazonian that has gone to protest twice in eight or ten months in Washington, D.C. None of them do that. None of them. All the things is to steal money. If you stop Chris Arnold from talking about this revolution, what else will he talk? Okay, for two months or more, I was on my own. Doing what? Telegraph. So I have something I'm going to be doing. After the revolution, we will be doing what we do best. Returning to our businesses. Just as much as with plenty of power. To be honest, whether or not you like it, 
this revolution slowed down my personal business by 90 percent but it was it was a great pleasure and will always remain a pleasure serving an oppressed population that is why we are still in the fight that's why we're still in the fight oh you think that you win the war by talking all this crap you talk on whatsapp no the war is still to be fought there's still a lot ahead expect it when i said here that swiss was dead on arrival swiss does not exist the swiss talk was a farce most of you the pigs you argue thank god chris Arno went and brought a german parliamentarian who told him to his face that you cannot be waiting for a particular group of persons or a particular negotiator for two years did i not say that here that there was no possibility swiss was doing anything good for the revolution some of you argue because you were born dull or you have been brainwashed you have to listen to the voices of wisdom when you are told the truth take the truth nobody who do, anybody who does not know who killed goliath cannot tell you anything sensible and reasonable a revolution is not run by armed robbers thieves who insist on things that are not feasible you get the point you have to look at and look at situations and you evaluate them and know if they are going to work for the benefit of the people you only want to insist on Swiss because it's a political gain for Sarko. A Swiss process that was initiated by La Republic du Cameroon, led by Ellie Smith. Today, what happened? They will tell you Swiss is no longer possible. And a parliamentarian came right there and told Chris Arnold to his face. Apart from bringing people to interview them to have views, can Chris Arnold do anything on his own? That's all he does. Calling people, trying to get relevance, yet... When it is time for re-interviews and for things that will go public and supreme in, in audience, they go and look before Sisiko. Let me tell you one thing. The most intelligent students will always be recognized by their results. No matter what you do. Yes, the most intelligent student will be recognized by their results. During morning assembly, morning devotion everybody is a student you make noise you go for break you eat some don't eat everybody is okay you close you go home they buy books you copy the same notes some make their mistakes and they are copying their notes that everybody is a student but when exams come out like in jhs Limbe, we knew during our badge that a young asim was the most intelligent he had 25 points you cannot dispute it a young asim akosa akosa terence is it akosa Back then, JHS Limbe, you know them. Those are the most intelligent people we used to have doing our badge. You go to G, you go to uh, uh, um, University of Boya James in my badge. The most intelligent student was Samuel Oti. You cannot fight it. Even as Eric Tato, you can make all the noise, you will not fight it. He's the most intelligent because it is reflecting on his results. That's the truth. In Judges Limbe, in my batch, I was the most intelligent in the arts department. You, you can't fight it. Even those who hated me as your Kawa prayed that I should fail. When the results came out, I was the best art student since the creation of JHS Limbe. So, Sisiko remains the best. And his results are reflected by the number of interviews and international organs that will talk about him. So, there is nothing, Sako, Sako, arm robbers don't lead people. You can have your time for as long as you are doing your propaganda on social media. But everybody is watching. People are looking at your record. What is he working? Who is he? What is his portfolio? He was a pastor. Where was his church? People ask what he did back home. They say he stole from people. He took people's money, went to Congo. He got a fake certificate somewhere in Nigeria. He came here. He says he's a doctor. Nobody can verify Sako's university. And then you don't expect John Afrique to come and be asking Sako, yeah, that, who are you? And who, what is Sako telling John Afrique? So, armed robbers don't lead revolutions. Revolutions are led by selfless people. Armed robbers can lead sabotage and conspiracy theories on WhatsApp. That is what Sako and Chris Anu are good at. You can make all the noise, you irritate people. I've avoided you for two months. You say all those are conspiracies. It doesn't concern me. I've told you for you to stay in peace and continue your life telling. Don't talk about Ayoktabe or prisoners or refugees. Don't talk anything about egg of sea that they are a republic they are not if you talk about them i would have many people know i would have replied long ago but i listened to ayabacho and he destroyed chris anu he simply says chris anu needs prayers and that's the truth watch out when you are good you are good 
So all of you of the peaks, you must know one thing. You will not be tolerated. I will just get one thing that somebody says Sisiko cannot live from prison. Yerima is representing Sisiko. And Sisiko, let me tell you today, remove that thing from your head. Lead from prison. Lead from toilet. Anywhere that you have the capacity to lead these people and define policies and write things that will bring the international community into play to resolve our crisis. Your Excellency, Sisiko Ayokta Julius, lead us from prison. Stop all this fakeness from the pigs that he cannot lead from prison. So Sisiko cannot lead from prison. It's Sako that can lead us from unemployment. What is the difference between, what is the, what, who is more powerful? A prisoner who is looked upon by all, or a jobless and unemployed man who is in America wandering around like an early man in the, in the, in the, in the 12th century. Sako should, Sako should not lead us from unemployment, unemployment as well. So people should stop this nonsense. It's not going to happen. Fake pastors, where is Sako's church? Where is his job? What's he doing? Paying rents from people's contributions while refugees are in there, are there in Nigeria, no food. For three years or so, two years, Sako collected money. When we started hitting on him, it's only recently he's taking money because he knows they are investigating him. He's giving food out there and taking pictures and putting banners like Paul Bia and Frank Bia, the same CPDM star. Where you go and give food, you make the ceremony, but a banner ceremony. Who does that? Have you ever seen Joe Biden or any other president who is civilized in the Western world, like where Sako lives in America? Have you seen Joe Biden? Have you seen people giving COVID relief and putting president's faces there? What is COVID relief? It's federal money. It's not your money. It's not, polit it's not a political campaign, if you don't know. Let me tell you, people. That's how you put disgrace yourselves. How do you take money with men, people's contribution to go and give refugees food? You take your arm, put your banner all over. What are you trying to showcase? Have you seen people sending the send 114? They have signed a bill. They call it the American Rescue Act. 1.9 trillion US dollars. They are giving money to paycheck protection, giving money left, right, center. Ask any businessman if you have seen Joe Biden's picture anywhere. Ask anybody who has received $1,400 if you have seen Joe Biden's picture. Ask people who go to churches. To receive free food if you see the pastor's picture these are contributions poor contributions not just it's not stuff to gain political relevance so stop this rubbish and go get jobs stop disturbing people if you don't know what you do disgrace yourself and let me take this opportunity to educate you you get the point you go and give five bucks or rice, ten bucks or rice, you take your banner and put it everywhere who does that a typical african dictator and yet you are still not recognized how many people care about what you do when you want to do something, have you ever seen Sisiko giving food? Oh, Mama and Bazonia giving food. Have you seen them putting their banners there? You think we don't give food to refugees? You know how many people will treat on the ground who are problems with their legs? Have you seen our pictures anywhere? When we raise money here, $5,000 with Salas Atefo Gijon and the rest, we get money to the, the child who finally died who had an issue with the head. Did you see our picture anywhere? Is the money is it coming from Sako's pocket? So how do you take post go and put your picture there? You spend more monies to print banners and you stay here and you are making noise. Are you not a nick on poop? Who does that in the world in the 21st century? And when you want to talk, people begin to make noise. You think what you are doing is normal? People behave like the dullest people in the world, very insane people. And when a prisoner stays there, he gives an interview. Instead of you to jubilate, you stay out here, you try to attack him. Are you not, are you not, are you not insane? Who does that? I want to ask you this question. Look at what Sako is doing. That is it right? Sit back and think of it. That's why you people are not recognized anywhere. Nobody's going to talk to you people. Not in America, not in Canada. I was just talking about Canada. Some MPs have met, and you see the committee will come out. They're encouraging what, uh, what Sisiku is doing from jail. I've told you people, Sisiku, if you are listening to me, get it today. You are the leader of this revolution. Take command from jail. Lead us from jail. We are following you. We are, we are your sheep. And don't bother about the, the, the pigs. What is, what, what is going on with these armed robbers? Is it normal what you are doing? And you want to talk? Tell me. Point me one thing that Sisiko said in that interview. That is not correct. That is not in favor of independence. Then I will, I will say, okay, I committed Sisiko. I will start supporting Sako. You are fighting. You are fighting a lost fight. A man is just struggling to showcase your, your work. It's just, it's just like somebody carries a product, a cultural product for his village to the market square and then says, oh, this is for my village. And you start getting angry. Why are you getting angry? Why are you getting angry? So that's it. Sisiko is the only legitimate leader. If Cameroon is watching, if the world is watching, that is the leader that is supported by everybody. That's why you see this activist is the most followed. And he supports Sisiko and all the prisoners. Manchung BBC, 
pen tennis, barista eyambe, barista shufai, pam from Galafo, Edwin Tassan Wife, who Scott Johnson referred to as a gossip meal because that is a man who is trying to destroy things in jail, but we still support him because he's a prisoner. There is no way we will tolerate armed robbers. Why you people, you have lived in America. You live in, in England, elsewhere. You see the way people operate issues of national interest. And our own is having an issue of double national interest as Amazonians. Do you see them operate the way Sarko is doing the, the things? When there is vaccine, it's like Joe Biden, Joe, Joe Biden will take the vaccine that is produced with taxpayers' money and bring to put his banner there. No! Biden is the president. He is leading a campaign, but he can never have his pictures there. That's why you see, after any term of office or any president that gets done, they build a library in their names. All American presidents, that is where the president now, they will save or store their personal information, store their memoirs while they were presidents, and they have their foundations where they can put their names. But while you are in office, you have to stay clear of anything once you are already there. It's only doing political campaigns. Can you see when? Let me give you a small example. When Biden and Harris were contesting with Trump, you go to their rallies, you see them put Biden Harris. After elections, Joe Biden is speaking now. Do you see him putting those things? No. He puts the American flag and he puts the project. It's no longer Biden. Joe Biden is not president for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. He's president for the over 333 million Americans. Listen very attentively. Yes. So let's get this clear. And you people get out from your cocoon of docility and stupidity. It's not going to help you. And I'm going to end here by reiterating that Southern Cameroon's AKA Ambazonia has only one president. And that's Sisiko Ayoktabe Julius. All the forces we have on the ground, they are dedicated to him. The few ones, I know you people go and get some rascals after this show to make audios and all of those things i don't have time there's no time we'll not reply to armed robbers we'll concentrate on bringing bigger projects that will help refugees and that's what i've been working on i don't have time to reply to jobless people armed robbers who stay here somebody like christian who's not even qualified to work in any newspaper any communication company we should not be bothering about them if you want to be on the safe side Stay clear of prisoners. Ayok Tabe is the only leader, only, only, that is recognized by 8 million people. The few of you, you think that Sako thinks that because they make WhatsApp or you think that he has any population. You don't have no population. If you have population, John Afrique will know and they'll come and interview you. BBC will know. The other day you saw Yerima's interview with more than five channels, all from Turkey, South Africa, everybody were talking to Yerima. Women's Day, Sisiko only tweeted. The whole world is reporting about it that the president said, the president said. Where is Sako's own speech on women's day? Who reported it? Probably Mimi for Prince Hansen. The same cycle. How many people out of the Cameroon community or Amber follow these two people? I want to ask you. So you you it's like it's like you are you are taking your, your shoes from your wardrobe in the room and you are bringing it down to the to the wardrobe in the in the in the living room. What's the difference? It's still in your house. So let us stay clear. Let's stay prudent and know one thing. Armed robbers will never be tolerated. Thank you so much. My name is Eric Tato. This has been my editorial and my personal view on issues, the way they are unfolding within the Ambazonian War of Independence. And this is in no way any form, in any form, any news item. It's an editorial. That is, by the way, a professional journalism item. I have the right to do this. Of course, maybe when I say professional journalism item, I'll be throwing water on some people's backs. They will not understand because they are not themselves journalists and they don't take time to research. So I want to thank you. I thank those who thank me. I also thank those who think otherwise. All the same, thank you for watching. If you have not shared this show, go out and share extensively. And if you have not listened or read Seseko's interview with Jean-Afrique, go and read it so that you will know how diabolic Chris Anu and the rest are. Everybody that has an opportunity to talk on behalf of a suffering people and give an interview to represent them and represent their aspiration, go ahead. You don't need permission from Sisiku to go tell a senator that they have killed 25,000 people. By the way, if you look at Sisiku and Chris Anu, Sisiku said more than 25,000 people have been killed, but Chris Anu said 
in his own interview that they have killed only about 12 or 14,000 people. Who is working for the Cameroon government? The one who is giving the right figures or the one who is downplaying the figures. So thank you all for watching. And like we've said, Sisiku, you have the right to negotiate anywhere, anytime, any day, in the middle of the night, 1 a.m., 2 p.m., anytime. They get you up by any means, by telephone, by text message, by email. Negotiate on behalf of the Ambazonian people. After all, if you are not the leader, they will not go spend millions to look for you and kidnap you in Nigeria. If Sako thinks otherwise, he should go to Konenge and replace Sisiku and will gladly support him as a new Ambazonian president. For now, he remains a con man, a scammer, an absolute thief and will never ever gain any international recognition and will only end on WhatsApp. Take it or leave it. There's one president for the Federal Republic of Ambazonia and one interim government and that is led by Sikwa Yokta Bejilos. Thank you so much for listening to my Victoria and have a blessed week. I'll be back when I will be back. Thank you. Bye-bye.